Knowing which shot is going to give you the best score on any given hole is really complicated and it's going to vary a lot from player to player. But these are some general tips that you can use to improve your shot selection. Also, people were saying that the trees in the background was getting a little bit old. I guess I agree. Let's try something different. This isn't bad, but we can mix it up more. Mm, no, I'm not really feeling this one. Let's try one more. <gasps> go back, go back! The hyzer is the most consistent shot in disc golf. That's something that a lot of pros have said, and I definitely think it's held true in my experience. I think it's because the disc stays on the same angle the whole time. If the disc is changing angles or you're trying to flex something, the wind can get underneath different parts of the disc and take it offline. But if it's on the same angle, it's going to be a lot more consistent in that wind. Also, when a hyzer comes into the ground, it's rotating against its motion. So it's going to tend to kind of flop on the ground and stay right there rather than roll or something like that. Especially if you throw it higher, you can really minimize the skip. But if you're going for a skip, you can try something low and on a lot more hyzer so it'll catch that edge. Also, I think a hyzer is the most accurate release. That's because if you're trying to throw a flat shot and the area that you can potentially release a disc is a circle, then the flat shot requires a very small wedge of that circle. But if you take that circle and you tilt it on that hyzer release, all of a sudden that wedge gets a little bit bigger and you have a little bit more margin for error when you're trying to hit gaps. For a lot of players, standing on the tee pad means they have a distance driver in their hand, but that's not always going to be the most consistent release. For me, I like to throw the slowest disc that I can reach a hole with. That's because I'm most comfortable and most accurate using a full throw at about 80 or 90% of my power. So that means I'm going to throw a lot more putters in mid ranges than someone who's more comfortable at about a 60 to 70%. For most players, I think it's around 70 or 75%, but that doesn't mean that they, they want to back off onto like 50% on a driver or something like that. I think it's a good idea to try and use the same power as much as possible and just change your disc selection so that the distance will match what's needed for that hole. Most of the time, we think of how fast a disc is moving relative to the ground. But discs, once they leave our hand, aren't really flying relative to the ground. They're flying relative to the wind. It's helpful to think of if there was a bug that was riding as a passenger on your disc and all it had to measure how fast it was going was something that measured the wind speed, how fast would the bug think it was moving? It would also probably be getting pretty dizzy from spinning on a disc. But uh, for me, it's helpful to think of throwing a disc really, really hard. So if I have a headwind driver and I want to know how it's going to fly when I throw it in a headwind and I'm playing with somebody on a calm day who has more arm speed than me, I'll have them throw it and see how it flies for them and I can be confident that that's how it's going to fly for me in a headwind. So if I usually throw a disc at about 50 miles an hour and I have a 10 mile an hour headwind, the disc is going to think that it's flying at 60 miles an hour and vice versa for tailwinds. If I usually throw a disc at 50 miles an hour and I have a 10 mile an hour tailwind, the disc is going to fly like I threw it at 40 miles an hour. So one way that it's helpful to change your shot selection is to disc down in a tailwind and throw the same shot. For example, if I usually throw a Raider on a shot but I have a tailwind, I'll probably throw a getaway because they fly very similarly. And if I really power up on the getaway in that tailwind, I'll probably get a similar flight that I would out of the Raider. But because it's a getaway and it has a tailwind, it's going to go the same distance. Or if I have a headwind and I have a shot that I usually throw a putter on, I'm probably going to disc up to my verdict just so that I can fight that headwind and throw a very similar shot that I'm used to, but it's just going to fly a little bit differently because of the wind. When throwing a disc in a crosswind, the wind will kind of intuitively push the disc left or right, but also the wind will raise or lower the disc depending on what angle the disc is on. For example, if I have a right to left crosswind and I throw a hyzer, the wind is going to get underneath the disc and lift it. Or if I have a left to right and I throw a hyzer, then the wind is going to be coming into the top of the disc and that will push it down. So anytime you throw a shot and you see a disc that's raising or lowering wildly, almost like it's on a malfunctioning elevator, it's helpful to think about what the wind is doing and why it's causing your disc to do that. So if I have a right to left shot or right to left wind shot and I need to throw a hyzer, I will probably aim just a little bit lower than I normally would and I'll trust the wind to get underneath that disc and get me the extra height to match the shot that I usually throw. Right. 
So I've spent a lot of time talking about the shots and the tips that I think are most effective for my experience and in my game personally. But none of these mean anything if they don't match your game. The most consistent shot for you is going to be one that you've practiced and one that's a disc that you know. So like I always say, the best way to get better at disc golf is to go throw your discs in a field so that you know how they're gonna fly in any situation and whatever shot you execute, you can execute it with confidence. That's my five tips for improving your shot selection. Thanks for watching this beginner's guide video from Dynamic Discs and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other content on how to become a better disc golfer. Thanks for watching. Catch, catch,